up now on GGSP, we try to get through a garden full of giant scary bugs in a review of the co-op survival game Grounded. Plus, a very spooky Mario Maker challenge. Welcome to GGSP. I am Flowey Jim. I'm your friendly neighborhood spider rad. And I am Count Jaxula. <laughs> We're getting into the spooky spirit because it is that time of year. Oh, does everyone have a favorite spooky game? I think mine has to be Luigi's Mansion because it's super haunted. For me, it's Castlevania Symphony of the Night because of Dracula, of course. What about you, Flowey? It would be wrong if I didn't say Undertale. But we have some spoopy games on the show today that are also very good. We've got our review of Grounded, and I'm gonna try and make my way through some of the spookiest Mario Maker levels. It's gonna be scary. But first, time for the spook. I mean, the scoop. I can't talk properly with these teeth. <laughs> Greetings. Uh, Jax, you look different. I woke up feeling strange. The sunlight was scorching upon my skin. Ooh, scorching? Skin? Sounds like you have a bad case of vampirism. Vampirism? Oh, no. I wanted to be a werewolf. Uh, well, do not worry, for I have both the diagnosis and the cure. <clears throat> Please close your eyes. Ready? Launch the flash! Don't you dare! <laughs> Ow! Owie! Hey, I'm cured. Thanks, Isa. I can't believe it actually worked. I mean, of course it worked. Uh, do the news, please. Uh, alrighty. First up, Minecraft Spooky Fest. Throughout October, players have been able to get Halloween-themed skins on the Minecraft Marketplace, play all new mini-games, and go up against mutated mobs. But the coolest part is the real-life Minecraft masks, which you can download from the official website. You can make your very own Minecraft head. There are also drawing stencils and even a recipe for an enchanted pumpkin dip. Oh, I want to be a dip this Halloween, Jax. I'm thinking chives and onion. A dip would make for an excellent familiar. Ooh, but next, Knockout City. <laughs> All throughout October, Knockout City has been celebrating mutants. We've already had the TMNT brothers kicking butt, but Halloween is bringing witchy-themed outfits, dragon heads, and more pumpkins. Pumpkin dip? No, no dip, just pumpkins. Oh, but speaking of pumpkins, you can grow them again in Animal Crossing. Yes, Animal Crossing is also celebrating Halloween. You can buy costumes from the Able Sisters, candy from Nook's Cranny, and if you talk to Jack, the czar of Halloween, he'll give you new reactions. Hmm, I'm going to have a reaction if I don't get some dip. Uh, um, how about some creepy sci-fi news happening right here in Australia? A group of scientists in Melbourne have managed to grow a brain and teach it how to play video games. It's called the Dish Brain and was grown using human and mice embryo neurons to create a puddle of sentience. They hooked it up with electrodes and taught it how to play the video game Pong using the brain's electrical pulses to move the paddles. Apparently, after five minutes, the brain was pretty bad, but after 20 minutes, it had improved. 1v1 me, Dish Brain. I do wonder what this means for the future of artificial intelligence. It means pretty soon that brain is going to be asking for dip. Ooh, dip where? Uh, that's all the news we've got for this week. It's time for dip. Brain dip! Hello, anyone? Where did everybody go? Hello, Rad. Welcome to today's challenge. I have lined up some very spooky Mario Maker levels. And your goal is to get to the finish without screaming. Without screaming, that'll be easy. Challenge accepted. All right, let's do this. Your game starts now. All right. This isn't so spooky. Oh, that is actually a bit spooky. Uh, where do I need to go? I think it's lying to me. I think I actually need to go this way. Oh, no. That was just a practice. That, that doesn't count. I didn't scream. I yelled. <laughs> All right, little door. Maybe that unlocks something this way. Oh, yes. Why is it <laughs> Sorry, I thought I'd bring you a bat. 
Thank you so much. He's a good friend. Thank you. I really thought I wasn't going to scream. Uh, third time lucky, I'm not going to scream this time. No matter what happens... Uh, that wasn't a scream. That was an exclamation. Ignoring you. <laughs> Got my head in the game. <laughs> to win this round. round. No, uh, maybe not. Ooh, a green door. That's handy. Mm. <laughs> my, my peripheral vision is getting better. <sighs> See, this is easy, given that the first two screams didn't count. Although the spooky uh, glitches on the screen are a little scary. Hey, Red, are you <laughs> winning? Just <laughs> to check if you were winning, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm going great. Thanks for <laughs> oh, asking. Very good. Just stay calm, Rad. And you can do this. Yeah. Okay. On. Maybe I'll go back. Oh! Oh. Okay, well I can't, oh, I can jump up there. Okay. I'm up here. <laughs> I feel like I may have screamed once or twice. Sorry, I forgot the bit. But there were also many times I didn't scream, and I wonder if Isa will give me points for that. Come back. Ah. Are you winning? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> You're both quite good <laughs> at spooking. <laughs> I think I need to have it swapped the other way. It needs to be off. Oh, no. Let's get back up here. Easy. I feel you there. Ah! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like your time is up. Challenge failed. Well, I didn't get to the end of the level, and I definitely didn't get to the end without screaming. Game over, I saw. Well done, Red. You are a very brave little spider, but a bit of a screamy one. You did good, Rattles. We are going to go do Ask SP now. Have fun. <laughs> Wait, don't leave me here. No, Jem, I want to answer some questions. Well, that's lucky because it's time for Ask SP, Jaxula. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's sink our teeth metaphorically into some questions, starting with this video from Owen. Dear GGSP, I have one question and a picture. What is your favourite character in Mario Strikers? And here's my picture. Thanks, Owen. <coughs> Excuse me. Thanks, Owen. We will have to evaluate your fine art in a moment. And warm up the art critique berets, would you please? Oh, yes, very good idea. Uh, but first, your question about our favourite character in Mario Strikers Battle League Football. Ooh, that's a toughie. What do you reckon, Jaxula? Well, I haven't had the chance to play it myself, but I did like the look of Wario's devastating bum power. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, of course. Doesn't love a bit of bum power. Uh, personally, from what I have played of Mario Strikers, I like Rosalina because she's great at scoring goals and does so with such flair. <laughs> but overall, it's all about a good balanced team, isn't it? Surely a balanced team is no match for Wario's bum power. Oh, but now, time for the art. May we have the art critique berets, please? Oh, well, thank oh, you, Thank Hand. you. Upon my petals, please, Jaxula. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Oh, preheated. Makes all the difference, doesn't it? Indeed. Now, 
Let us art. Hmm, hmm, yes, yes, a portrait of life as a Fall Guys bean. Really captures the zeitgeist. Hmm. I like the representation of the planet, perhaps Saturn. It evokes wonder, the mystery of space exploration. Can we ever hope to know space? Who's to say? Hmm. Yes, truly, our thoughts have been provoked. Oh, so cold. Thank you, Owen. Moving on now to another video, and this one is from Jesse. Hey, GGSP. I have two questions for you, and my name is Jesse. One, when is the new Forza Horizon 6 game coming? And two, have you ever reviewed the new Forza Horizon update? And plus, Darren is a mega super noob. And Rad, please do these emoticons. Manicata! No, no. Jesse, if you're wondering about the next Forza Horizon game, which we assume will be Forza Horizon 6, we haven't heard any goss about it at this stage. Yes, and until we hear the official word, we can only really assume that there will be a Forza Horizon 6. But if we do assume it's in the works, there's usually at least two to three years between each major Forza Horizon game release, based on past releases anyway. Forza Horizon 5 came out in 2021, so we probably wouldn't expect a full Forza Horizon 6 game until at least 2023 or 2024. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, I do wonder where it'll be set this time. Have they done one in French Perth yet? Oh, I, I don't think so, but that would be très bien. As for whether we've reviewed the Forza Horizon updates on GGSP, well, we did take a look at the LEGO Speed Champions expansion when that came out for Forza Horizon 4. And we also took a look at the Hot Wheels expansion that came out for Forza Horizon 5 this year. I gave it four and a half out of five rubber chickens. And you can check both of those out in our online archive. Also, nice to see Darren still being called a noob. A mega super noob, no less. Oh, I'll make a note of that to let him know. Maybe on the Christmas card. I'm sure he'll love that. And now I think we have time for one more quick vid, and this one is from Shay and Jack. Hi, GST. My name's Shay and Jack. Today we have one question for you. What is your favourite biome in Minecraft? And I said, I said, please do this. LA all day. Amongst us. Ooh. Us a glee. Little guy ahead. Tall fella. Thank you, GGSP. Oh, watch out, Jeremy. It's two Ender Dragons. Take cover. We need arrows. Big Jacks, Jacks. It's OK. It's just Shay and Jack in Ender Dragon costumes. And very nice ones at that. Oh, phew. That's a relief. Now, in answer to your question about our favourite Minecraft biomes, well, I'd have to say I love the lush caves, home of those atmospheric glowberries and adorable axolotls. This biome adds a really cool mood to the game's cave systems. Oh, how about you, Jax? Well, I'm rather fond of the mushroom bio because I'm a fun guy at heart. I love seeing all those wacky mushrooms, especially when they're on a cool little mushroom-filled island. Oh, very nice. I don't like eating mushrooms in real life, but I do enjoy them aesthetically. But now I think that's all the time we have for Ask SP this week. If you have a question for us, go here to send it in. And if you send us a video and it gets picked for the show, we'll send you some very cool GGSP stuff. Hey, do vampires actually eat mushrooms? Well, there is actually a fungus known as the bleeding tooth mushroom. That sounds terrifying. It grows on you. Hey, Gem, do you like my new look? I know how much you love spiders. Oh, yeah, it's great. Spiders in the studio, spiders in Grounded. This is totally not a nightmare of mine. A game that takes everyday items and garden critters and asks the question, what if they were a million times scarier? And then makes that a reality. You play as one of four teens who've been miniaturized with no memory of how or why. 
Left to your own devices, you have to travel to five hidden labs to figure out what happened and how to fix it, all while trying to survive in a garden that hides danger around every corner. Oh, no, 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 no. This is definitely not the happy-go-lucky riding ladybugs and toy cars I expected for my own shrinky-dink adventure. However, with a decent-sized list of weapons, armor, base building options, and helpful stat boosters you can craft from fallen bugs, given enough time, you can make yourself a pretty comfy home away from home. Time being the key word here, because this is a chunky game. Oh, it sure is, in more ways than one. The garden is huge, especially for our tiny heroes. So you'll be spending a lot of time running around, either from something like ravenous bugs or to something like important resources. And although there is a map, it doesn't really tell you much. So I got used to navigating by landmarks. For instance, there's the oak tree filled with big old spiders, the hedge filled with little old spiders, a pond containing the world's most intimidating koi fish, and a picnic table that took me way too long to figure out how to climb up. Giving directions to my mates in co-op was interesting, to say the least. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> but I love that kind of survival world, one that's just so big and full of life that you really have to get creative with how you tackle it. And that's something that Grounded pulls off really well. You can play in either co-op or single player, as well as create shared multiplayer worlds that people can just jump into whenever they want, regardless of who set it up. Which is great if you've got friends who just want to build while you want to hunt, or vice versa. I definitely think it's more fun with friends, if only to break up the screeching you'll be doing with some laughter here and there. But also because it's so much easier to get around if you have more than one inventory to make use of. Or more than two legs. As it is, the space you have is criminally small, given how much stuff you'll be lugging around. Yeah, even just having the option to expand the inventory by a few slots would have been nice. Otherwise, you just spend half your time dropping common items so that you can make room for more important or rarer resources. And you've already got enough to worry about on a hunt, especially at night. Bugs are all over the place and vary in how hard they can hit you. Some, like aphids, are docile and will flee while ants are curious, but will mostly give you space unless you attack them first. Then there's larvae, which hate you all the time, bombardiers, who are just the worst, and stink bugs, which just, ew, why? Why are you the way you are? I'll oh, stop that. Unfortunately, I found the melee combat to be quite finicky at times, and in the heat of the moment, little mistakes can cost you dearly. It was pretty frustrating early on to feel like every enemy could and would drop me in a matter of seconds. I just got so tired of dying all the time. Yeah, I get that. The close combat issues really started to annoy me, and that is why I used the bow all the time. Building up your arsenal by picking off the smaller prey, working your way up to those big beefy boys, mwah, that's the bread and butter of survival games like this. You can also scan the bug parts you harvest for... Science. Which goes towards levelling up and unlocking more item recipes. It's a slow drip and grindy for sure, but I think it does a great job of encouraging you to explore while still giving you goals to build towards. Yeah, that's true. And that feeling of being totally outmatched all the time did fade eventually. However, I still found myself too often getting stuck in that cycle of needing tougher weapons to beat tougher bugs, but not having them because I couldn't beat the tougher bugs I needed to make the weapons with. Thankfully, though, Grounded has a bunch of really useful game settings you can fiddle with to create a more custom experience, which I found super handy. Like turning off enemy sights so aggressive bugs don't bother you, no weapon degradation so they don't break over time, and keeping your items after you die instead of them being left behind. Like everything's still here. It's not cheating if the devs give you the option. And like I always say, there is no shame in playing how you want to play. Yeah, as long as you're having fun. And for those that aren't a fan of the survival genre, you can start up a game in creative mode. And for arachnophobes, there is the option to make the spiders look less, oh, spidery. Which I actually found to be more off-putting than the actual spiders. But I would think that because I am a spider. But we should wrap this up. Final thoughts, Gem? While I do think it's still being held back by some technical bugs, I'm really enjoying Grounded. 
I like how big the world is, how detailed and fun it is to explore. They've really captured the fun and magic of being a tiny person in an oversized world. After 40 plus hours between this and the early access version, I'm still finding new things. So I'm giving Grounded four out of five rubber chickens. What I like most about this game is how much it commits to the bit without ever taking itself too seriously. They've really lent into those classic survival sandbox elements to create a super satisfying and moorish experience. There is still some work to be done, but what's here is a dang good time. So I'm giving it four and a half out of five rubber chickens. Wonderful review, you two. <laughs> We really should fix the lights in here. Yeah. Well, our spooky time is up, but next week on the show... We've got our massive review of Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Oh, I cannot wait to get Rabbit Peach back on my team. Until next time, may all your games be spooky ones. Flowey out. Jaxula out. Spider Rad out. Don't worry, I'll go get a ladder. OK, sorry. Mm. Yep. Doing great.